understanding rhetoric, insights from philosophy, mythology, and society. Rhetoric, as an ancient art and discipline, has captivated scholars and thinkers across different realms of knowledge. Explored through the lenses of A, philosophy, B, mythology, and C, society, rhetoric unveils its multidimensional nature and sheds light on its role in communication, persuasion, and the shaping of discourse. Part A, Philosophical Context in the realm of philosophy, rhetoric has long been a subject of contemplation, with notable contributions from thinkers such as Plato and Aristotle. Plato, in his dialogue Phaedrus, defines rhetoric as the art of enchanting the soul by discourse. Plato highlights the power of persuasive language to stir emotions, inspire thought, and shape beliefs. Rhetoric is the art of enchanting the soul by discourse. Plato in Phaedrus. Aristotle, on the other hand, offers a more comprehensive definition of rhetoric in his work titled Rhetoric. He describes it as the faculty of observing in any given case the available means of persuasion. Aristotle views rhetoric as a systematic study of persuasive techniques, emphasizing the importance of understanding the audience, context and methods of influence. Rhetoric may be defined as the faculty of observing in any given case the available means of persuasion. Aristotle in Rhetoric More in detail of Aristotle's understanding of rhetoric, there are three distinct elements such as ethos, logos, and pathos that intertwine to create persuasive and effective discourse in communication and dialogues. 1. Ethos, establishing credibility and trust. Ethos, derived from the Greek word for character, revolves around the speaker's credibility and ethical appeal. Aristotle argues that an effective rhetorician must establish a sense of trust, authority, and moral character to enhance their persuasive power. Ethos is cultivated through factors such as expertise, experience, and virtuous conduct, which lend credibility and authenticity to the speaker's arguments. Additionally, ethical conduct and adherence to moral values contribute to ethos, as they demonstrate the speaker's integrity and reliability. 2. Logos, engaging with reason and logic. Logos, meaning logic or reason, involves the use of rational arguments and evidence to persuade the audience. Aristotle contends that a compelling argument should be grounded in logic, coherence, and a systematic presentation of evidence. Logos appeals to the audience's intellect, encouraging critical thinking and reasoned judgment. Aristotle advises rhetoricians to employ deductive and inductive reasoning to construct persuasive arguments. By structuring arguments with logical coherence and supporting them with evidence, the rhetorician enhances the persuasiveness of their discourse. 3. Pathos, evoking emotions and empathy. Pathos refers to the emotional appeal employed by the rhetorician to sway the audience's sentiments and evoke empathy. Aristotle recognizes the powerful influence of emotions in persuasion, asserting that the effective use of pathos can inspire and motivate the audience to action. To invoke pathos, Aristotle advises the use of vivid language, storytelling, and rhetorical devices that elicit specific emotions. By understanding and harnessing the power of ethos, logos, and pathos, 
one can navigate the intricacies of rhetoric and craft persuasive discourse. Part B, Mythological Context. Mythology, rich with captivating narratives and symbolic representations, also provides insights into the nature of rhetoric. In ancient Greek mythology, Homer's epic poem, The Iliad, alludes to rhetoric as a gift bestowed by the gods. Homer suggests that rhetoric is the power to persuade, endowed upon individuals by divine intervention. This mythological perspective emphasizes the extraordinary nature of rhetoric, positioning it as a supernatural force capable of shaping destinies and swaying opinions. Rhetoric is the power to persuade, which is often given by the gods as a gift to individuals. Homer, the Iliad. Similarly, in Ovid's Metamorphoses, rhetoric is portrayed as the art of transforming words into potent weapons or delicate flowers. Ovid's depiction reflects the transformative power of language, highlighting how rhetoric can shape reality, mold perceptions, and evoke strong emotional responses. Rhetoric is the art of turning words into weapons or flowers, shaping reality through language. Ovid, Metamorphoses. Part C, Social Context. Examining rhetoric through the lens of society unveils its role in communication, influence, and the construction of truth. Key thinkers like Cicero and Michel Foucault shed light on the social dimensions of rhetoric. Cicero, a prominent Roman philosopher and orator, defines rhetoric as the art of speaking well and persuasively. He underscores its essentiality in effective communication and its influence in society. Cicero emphasizes the significance of eloquence, the power of persuasion, and the ability to sway public opinion through skillful rhetoric. Rhetoric is the art of speaking well and persuasively, essential for effective communication and influence in society. Cicero, Dora Tor. Michel Foucault, a renowned philosopher and social theorist, offers a critical perspective on rhetoric in his work, The Archaeology of Knowledge. He presents rhetoric as a power knowledge system that regulates and shapes social discourse. According to Foucault, rhetoric constructs truth, reality, and the boundaries of acceptable knowledge within a given society. Rhetoric is a power knowledge system that shapes and regulates social discourse, constructing truth and reality. Foucault, the archaeology of knowledge. Exploring rhetoric through the philosophical, mythological, and social contexts enriches our understanding of this ancient art. The philosophical insights of Plato and Aristotle demonstrate rhetoric's transformative and persuasive power, emphasizing its ability to captivate and influence the audience. The mythological perspectives from Homer and Ovid portray rhetoric as a supernatural force capable of shaping destinies and molding perceptions through the artful use of language. Lastly, examining rhetoric through the social lens, as highlighted by Cicero and Michel Foucault, reveals its significance in effective communication, social influence, and the construction of truth and knowledge. By exploring rhetoric through philosophy, mythology, and society, we uncover its timeless relevance, and its enduring presence in human communication. Thanks for watching. Always humanities first.